to this is Parker from Team Shockwave, and I'm here with Pat. And uh, what was it? He just won the um, Shadow, what was it? Shadow Specter sneak peek box tournament. Wait, why did I say sneak peek? This didn't make any sense. <laughs> What's that you were playing for uh, for this tournament? Yeah. None other than Balan Boxers. <laughs> All right. So, do um, you have any uh, comments before you want to go through the deck profile? Yo, this deck is probably the cheapest yet most annoying deck to ever play against. Play it! Sounds like an Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know TK, I'm not Asian. <laughs> yeah. So, for the monster lineups. Three switch hitters. What? Basically what it is, is it's basically Blizzard of the Far North of Black Wings. So when this card is normal summoned, you special summon a battling boxer monster from your graveyard in attack position. Uh, what you do though is the turn you use it, if you exceed summon with it, it can only be a battling boxer monster. So a lot of the deck requires setup to actually get this guy going. He's a very good win condition and he's basically the heart of the deck. Uh, next up, three spars. Um, what he does is he's basically a free summon from your hands if you control battling boxer monster. So control battling monster, uh, boxing monster, special summon them, overlay. He does have uh, the requirement that if you do do it this turn, you can't declare an attack for the rest of the turn. Uh, the rest of the, uh, your turn, my bad. But he's wearing like Bobby Shark, so the, the cool thing you can do is you can do all your attack phase shenanigans. Then during main phase two, you can special summon him and make any exceeds you want. Uh, we got headgear. Headgear basically provides the setup over there. You normal summon him, then his effect activates where you can send a balance monster monster from the deck to the graveyard. So basically, if you or late game, late game most of the time you want to send a card that I'll be getting to, uh, glass shot. But also during mid game, you can send uh, Swisher to get your plays ready because a lot of the deck revolves the graveyard, and we'll get to that with the next card. Also, he can't be destroyed by battle uh, while in face up attack position once per turn. I don't know. He talks about the Gordon Battling Boxer Glass Jack. So, what happens is he gets, when you summon him, he's basically just a 2000 beater. When your opponent attacks him, he destroys himself by his own effect, like Utopia with no uh, with no Xyz targets on it. So, it causes a replay. You can attack again. Kind of sucks, right? But the point is, when he's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, including his own effect, we add one battle. Battling Boxer Monster from the graveyard to your hand. So now, this don't take them all. Foolish Burial makes sense, I'm sure you understand. Blizzard makes sense, and eventually the Xyz that we'll get to will eventually, you know, it'll make sense to everyone. Uh, the rest of the monsters, for the last two boxers, are I played two Battling Boxer uh, Counter Blow. What he does is, he's Kallet. So he's Black and Kallet. So you attack, or they attack you. If it's a Battling Box monster, you can remove this card from your hand or graveyard from play, and it gains the, uh, the attack by a thousand. Uh, what would you monster. call it? It was like uh, Black and Kallet. A Kallet? Yeah. Not a Kalut. Are you sure it's Kallet? I don't know. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> It might be a. I don't know. All right, all right. One effect veil. Actually, my bad. Two effect veil. Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, I played two. Um, you This seems like it was a better option than Maxi in my deck at, at the time because I like to set up my lead blow, which I'll get to in a second. Get a nice, you know, Xyz monster that I have to protect, and I rather just negate their effects and draw more cards when I know I can just protect my monster better with effect veil. Uh, one maxi, just because I don't have a third effect healer, and I feel like this is still good to play <laughs> in a dragon heavy format. One mask chameleon, uh, he's he's pretty good. He uh, goes in correlation with Blast uh, and effect healer if you wanted to. And Thrasher, right? Yep, and the one Thrasher that I'll get, the one Thrasher that I play. So summon, grab one of these, and face up defense. You can synchro or Xyz, but the turn you do that, you can't special summon uh, for the rest of the turn except from the extra deck. So he's technically just you know another switch hitter, except I can make Stardust or shoot uh, Spark Dragon. They actually helped a lot during uh, my Dragon Spellbook matchups. Um, for the spells, two lands. I feel it's at least required to play two lands in a Valley Box deck because your Xyz, your uh, Lead Yoke is actually just you know the most prominent thing you want to keep on board. 
This uh, the new support, Battling Boxing Spirit, it's actually really decent. It opens up a lot of plays. You build the top card of your deck, and then you target one Battling Boxer monster in your graveyard, and you special summon it in face of defense. You can only activate it once per turn. This uh, this actually speeds up the deck a lot because either turn two or an early turn one Levable Chain play, because your deck can make rank four as first turn, this card can also set up a lead yoke with, it, with another rank four in one turn, or it just allows an easy Xyz summon while technically milling you know, a potential uh, good battling boxing target. I really like it, so I'm playing two. Uh, two MST, it's the same reasoning, but you know, field spells are a thing, and I don't feel like losing with a Dragon Ravine. Um, one Foolish Burial, because it sets off Glass Jaws effects, and what it does is basically become you know, a reinforcement the army in the grave, and it sets up your graveyard. It's also, you can, uh, another target is the, um, with a counter, right? Yep, you right. can send a counter below the grave, since he activates in the grave just by removing it, you can, you know, just swing over things for a, a quick bum rush if you wanted to. Alright. Dark Hole, because, you know, it's those, that problem solving card, and reinforce the army, because my next warrior is. And, my funky trap lamp, two mirror forest, because I I hate, you know, oh, I some monsters and I have to get rid of them. Two Phoenix Chains. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. Two Phoenix Chains. Uh, flip it, target a monster. Monster can't attack, its effect is negated. And uh, basically, it's just there to make sure that my monster doesn't get ruined by a monster effect, you know. And it stops the attack, so it, it can solve. It does everything. This is just a meta call that I decided to play for the tournament. I tried two ghost matches because I can't really main Imperial Iron Wall because I play uh, I play counter blow and he has to remove himself and play, so it's contradictory to my uh, play style. How does this ghost match work out to you through this whole tournament? Um, I drew it once against Dragoony Dragons, and it did help. He had to he had to get rid of it to continue the duel, but other than that, I didn't draw, I didn't see it that much this tournament, so I couldn't tell if it really hindered or helped me. But overall, the one time I drew it, it did help out. Uh, I played two Trap Suns. It's really good this format. When you're playing a control style variant or a combo variant, there's a lot of card. There's a lot of trap cards uh, this format that are just so devastating. You got six cents, and then you got return. That you know sometimes MST doesn't cut it because people don't want to blind MST. So this is the next best option. You can pick and choose what you want to negate. Besides Solemn Warning, everything else, it's just it's free negation. Like it's up to you. I I really like the control aspect of traps then. I think it works really well in this deck. And also just for protection variants. Solemn Warning. Torrential. One Banny is just because for also the dragon matchup. I played two Gozens, but I didn't want to play three because if I open two, I just I'd be salty and it, it would probably suck against some matchups. So I play one Banny because I mean, it's more lenient against other matches and you know the game itself. And it's still a really good card. Get a lead yoke on board, have this face down. It's really hard to get rid of. And compulse. And then for the extra deck. The team play himself, Balan Boxer, but he does summon two uh, Balan Boxer monsters. He, uh, when he's destroyed by a card effect, either by battle or by card effect, you can get rid of a material to protect a Balan Boxer monster. One Balan Boxer monster, it doesn't even have to be him. If they get destroyed in any way, get rid of a material, they'll protect it for the turn. What happens is when he loses a material, he gains 800 attack. So if he has one, if he loses the first material, he's 3,000. If he loses the second material, he's 38. So he becomes either a huge monster that you just can't get rid of, or he just puts pressure on because nobody wants to try to destroy his ass. He, he's literally just like, he's so good. He's ridiculous. And you have to play through. Heroic Champion Excalibur, the deck's all warrior oriented. Your deck, the deck is easy to push the game. You can push the game really easy. You can, you can deal 4,000 in one turn just by having a, a counter blow play and a switch hitter. This, this can just help you rush for game. It's, it's proven really helpful this turn. Gemini Pearl, just you know, a free. If I need something bigger and I don't have any more options, I just throw him in. Uh, Maestro Symphony, more protection. He works with Glassjaw also. 
I forgot to mention that these two, if Glassjaw is equipped as a material, and these two get destroyed and use their destruction effect to get rid of the material to save them, Glassjaw will get its effect since it's not used as a cost. It's used as just part of their effect to protect itself by getting rid of the material. So you do use this, Glass Rod triggers, and you get an awesome. Cowboy. Uh, Balan Box of Starcasters. It's really not that good, but I mean, the deck can make it. How often do you um, I, I never make this. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost not irrelevant to explain the fact it like deals damage and destroys the monster when it attacks. It, Rare scenarios, I wouldn't, I don't make it half the time I should. Uh, Abyss Dweller for dragons and, uh, you know, water matchups. Black Ship. Dude, Ultra, what's the super one? I don't know. Revolve <laughs> Chain. I use this card a lot. This is like my main, my next, like, go-to Xyz. If I have Spar or, and a dead, uh, and a dead, uh, Balan Boxer, what's his name, Switch Hitter, I can first turn make that, send the Switch Hitter to the grave, and then send Glass Draw through its effect, get the Switch Hitter right back, it's live next turn. So that's one of the many plays I did if my hand seemed a little slow at first. Uh, and then I played some Synchros for the Mask Chameleon, Stardust Dragon, uh, Shooting Spark Dragon, uh, Stardust Spark Dragon, and Crimson Blader, because it's fire. And that deck can make it. And it was really good. And I'm missing two more cards, and it's supposed to be Cheat Commissioner and Scrap Dragon, but I don't know what I did with them. I made this, uh, I don't know, I, I could have made Cheat Commissioner this game too, because okay. I got Xyz, uh, I got Xyz, uh, what's that card called? Encore? No, uh, Encore, yeah. Encore, Xyz Encore. And I had two threes on the field, and I was looking through my edge deck, and I'm like, where's my, where's my Cheat Commissioner? I didn't have it. <laughs> So I'm missing two cards, but it's supposed to be 15 with the Scrap Dragon and the Chief, uh, Chief Commissioner. Oh. But overall, the deck played really well. Um, I lost. It was five rounds, Swiss, and then top to, uh, top, eight. top eight. I lost. I beat Evil Swarms. I beat Dark World. I beat. Uh, I lost the Spellbooks round three, and then I beat uh, Dragoony Dragons, and then I beat Spellbook. Yeah, I beat. Uh, I won. Oh, I beat Noble Knights. Noble Knights round five. They're pretty good. They're just kind of inconsistent. And then uh, top eight, I won against Spellbooks and we got the prize. So overall, I did pretty good. Uh, other than that, you guys should play the deck. It's it's really cheap, so don't look past it to pick it up. It's really competitive in the meta game right now. You just you have to kind of adapt it. You got to play it correctly. Sometimes you got to slow roll. You can't go right into lead you. You got to just control the game. The deck has free advantage sometimes. All right, so that's all I would have to say. About it. All right, then thanks, Pat. Uh, this is Parker from. Uh, Pandemonium Bookstore, signing out.